Hello, this is Cook Cinema Reviews. I'm your host, Sol Carlos, and I'm here joined with... Kian Batkube. This is an important um, podcast. This is our very first podca- podcast here in Cook Cinema, so we're very excited. And today we'll talk about uh, the most anticipated movies of 27, uh, 2018. Sorry, it's, you know, still <laughs> January, so it's still <laughs> weird to say it. Um, it's very exciting because, you know, we just did our video for our top you know, the worst films of this 2017 and the best ones. And, you know, we said that the films weren't that great. So I think, you know, this year, what do you think? Is it going to be better films overall than last year or? I think that there's definitely going to be much more um, better and exciting films. Mm -hmm. I think we have a lot more anticipated ones in the lineup. And I just think that there's a lot more. The better studios are pumping out things. Disney, Disney, Pixar released things this past year, but Disney didn't release anything this no. past year. And Disney will be returning this upcoming year. Pixar is still going to be releasing this year. Um, uh, Sony is. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> uh, and then just you know, there, there'll there'll be some good stuff coming up, but. I'm excited, yeah. It's definitely not like the Disney Renaissance or anything like that. You know, unfortunately, I think DreamWorks has has lost its touch. Uh, you know, I'm still hopeful that one day it's going to uh, recover and bring us some amazing things. They're definitely doing changes to the actual studio. So, you know, I, I hope this films this year. Uh, we can see a change from what we've seen so far. So, uh, what film do you want to talk about first? So we'll, I guess, start with the earliest one that's going to be released, which is uh, Isle of Dogs. So this is our first pick for uh, one of the ones we're looking forward to. And so Isle of Dogs, I don't know too much about it, but from what I know, so it's it's scheduled to supposedly come out on March 23rd. Um, it is a, it looks like the studio it's coming from, it's not coming from a very well-known studio. It says here it's coming from Fox, Searchlight, and Indian Paintbrush. So I don't know where these, I don't know if <laughs> I'm just going to call this a Fox movie, but it's not with any of the studios no. that I'm known for. Um, but the interesting thing about this is that it's a stop motion animated movie. So the last time we had a stop motion animated movie was Kubo and the Two Strings That's in 2016. Right. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see how they do. Have you seen the trailers for this? Or you're... Um, is it the one? Let you're me see the picture. Ready? Yeah, I have seen uh, the trailer like a while back. Um, you know, this kind of reminded me a lot of Wallace and Gromit. And I personally do enjoy those films. I think they're very creative and I think it's different. And I like that. Um, you know, I'm all about new things in animation. It shouldn't be just all CGI. I love, um, you know, stop motion and also, um, what's also the from the Polar Express and Tintin? Um, motion capture. Motion, yeah, motion, motion capture. capture. You know, and I think it's great to see new things, you know, and with technology evolving, I think it's great. But, you know, the sad thing is that even though maybe this film will be amazing, it won't do much money because they just have that reputation that people are not interested in this kind of films, unfortunately. Um, I think Kubo was amazing, um, but I think Laika did a better job. I think this film, you know, aesthetically is not as good looking as, you know, uh, Kubo to me. I don't know what you think about that. I, I agree. I think the, the I think the struggle this movie is going to face is just that from the looks of it, it's like the stop motion doesn't look appealing, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. It's not that it's bad animation or bad stop motion. It's just like the dogs kind of look freaky. And like the kid Definitely. looks freaky. And from what I saw in the trailer, like there was a scene where there's just maggots on like this thing. And it was like, it looked disgusting. So I don't know. Like this is a weird movie to be aiming at kids. Yeah. Um, what do you think but, it is that most stop motion films have like a kind of freaky but that's the look thing to is, it? Kubo didn't. Like, that's Kubo the thing. Kubo looked really attractive to yeah. um, to general audiences, and so that's what I fear this movie is going to be. Is I think people that like films, and I think people that appreciate the art of it, are going to love it, and it's going to be a great movie for that. But I just my thing I want to see is is it going to attract and do well with the general and anim- the general audience? And do you know the general like synopsis of it um i can pull it up really quick um from what i understood basically it's uh it's basically about this kid who gets stranded it's in it takes place in japan it says in the future an outbreak of canine flu leads the mayor of a japanese city to banish all dogs to an island that's a garbage dump the outcast must soon embark on an epic journey when a 12 year old boy arrives on the island to find his beloved pet wait can i see the picture again 
Because I thought you were show. Oh, okay. No, I got it confused. You know which one? The other one that is like prehistoric. Early man. Oh, early man. Yeah, I got it confused with that one. Sorry about that. No, you're good. Um, no, yeah, but definitely, I still agree that the look is kind of freaky and um, mm -hmm. <laughs> unnatural. And I think you know you have to watch those films that are like an hour and thirty minutes long. And if you don't find the characters appealing to look, it's kind of hard to enjoy them. That's kind of also a problem with me with DreamWorks films because you know, like I watch. The boss baby, and I'm like, you know, uh, it's, I, I don't like much of the style of it. Or Ferdinand, the human, uh, the humans were so weirdly like animated. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, even though the story could be great in this film, if you don't like the style, it's kind of hard to enjoy it, unfortunately. So. Is that everything? Yeah, I think that right, we're good cool. with it. Well, then uh, we hope that when it comes out, definitely give it a, a shout out and we might review it uh, later this year. If you think we should review it, definitely leave a comment yes, letting please. us know if you want us to review Isle of Dogs for like for sure. Um, and then, all right, moving on, I guess. Yes. Uh, uh, what's the we'll next do, on our we'll list? Do. Well, okay, we're going to talk about a very anticipated film. Uh, many of us are 90s kids. Well, it's just, this came out in the 2000s, actually. So it's been 13 years of us waiting for this film, The Incredibles 2. Great title. <laughs> I love what they did with the logo. It's very creative and, and um, simple. And I think it's, it works. I think it's good. Uh, I like that it's just incredible soon. Nothing like, oh, they're back again or anything cheesy like that. So my, you know, my thoughts of this film... Um, you know, I want to talk with you about this. You know, it's been 13 years and the animation has changed a lot in that time. You know, uh, we've seen like the details in Coco, like the, the wrinkles and everything. And if you go back and watch the, the first film... You kind of see, you know, that kind of old look of it. And, you know, when I saw a picture of the film, how is it going to be like, you can definitely see changes. But it's very interesting, I feel like, how much you think they're going to stay with the true look of it and how do you feel about it? I am definitely probably like most. This is the movie I'm most looking forward to for this upcoming year. We have been waiting years for this. It's mm -hmm. Pixar's, um, you know, this is one of their sequels that we are definitely, this is one of the sequels that people have actually been asking yeah, for. Actually. Um, and uh, I think my biggest thing is there's they still haven't released too much information about it. They've still kept it very... Um, not secretive, yeah. but there's not much information yet as to confirm exactly what the plot is going to be. We all, the only thing they've released so far is a teaser trailer. Which was disappointing um, for me. It, all it does is it shows, for those who haven't seen it, is it just shows Jack-Jack kind of running around using his powers, and then he splits. The cool part to me was that when Jack-Jack just splits mm -hmm. the, the old logo, and so that it says Incredibles 2. Um, and then it just shows this quick scene where Bob d uh, discovers that he has pa that uh, Jack Jack has powers, and so that's all they've given us um, so far. And from what I got from that, I didn't think like I don't think it's going to be terrible, but I also mm -hmm. don't still see that it's going to be this great thing yet. So I'm just waiting for them to release more. Um, and then, you know, then I can get excited. Then I really know that I can get excited and trust that they're going to do good with yeah, it. Yeah, talking about that teaser trailer, very disappointing for me. You know, you have the big appeal with this movie is, you know, the family aspect of it. And the fact that you only got to see Jack-Jack and the dad, it was like, really? We've been waiting this long and just give us this? Uh, I mean, it was still enjoyable and cute, but I was like... That's it. And then we have one picture, which, you know, um, you see the whole group together. And it's probably in the beginning of the film. And for me, they all look very similar, but just kind of more polished and the colors more vibrant. But Jack-Jack in the teaser trailer looked different to me. Something interesting also is that, you know, all the cast, the original voice is back, except for, unfortunately, Flash, because the guy, you know, Dash. grew up. Dash, sorry. <laughs> Dash. Uh, he uh, grew up, so his voice definitely changed from, you know, when he was, I don't know, seven or eight, I don't know. Uh, but it's nice that most of them are back. That's really nice. They didn't have to um, mm -hmm. recast Lisa. But the story is going to have a, more of a focus on Elastic Girl. And Bob is going to stay home and kind of take care of the kids and kind of explore this Jack Jack um, because they don't know that he has powers. And what do you feel about, you know, having more of the focus on Elastigirl? I'm so glad that there's going to be more of a focus on Elastigirl. She was one of the characters I was really hoping they would focus more on in the sequel. Um, we got plenty of Bob in the last movie. Mm -hmm. And they're hinting that Jack-Jack might be a strong focus of the movie. 
like I said, so far they haven't given me a reason to hate that, but I also, like, I don't initially, like, like Jack-Jack. I think he's yeah. just all right. I thought he was funny as the little bit he had in the first movie, but I can't imagine the whole second movie being about him, and I hope that's not the route they take. But we'll see, you know, we'll see what they do. Well, I mean, for me, it's like, yeah, I'm all about girl power, yes, but, you know, I, I would have liked if the, you know, in the end of the first film you see them all come together and fight as a family and I think that was very strong so I think I would have liked it more if it was the focus on all of them together mm-hmm. uh, but you know maybe that's their description maybe they are together we, we barely know anything and but what we do know is that this film takes place like five minutes after the first film so they don't age it's literally like right after you know in the end where they're fighting this small dude um is right after that. And what do you, what do you think? Uh, did you expect like Toy Story, like wow. they were going to pass time? or did When you expect- I found out that they were having it take place right after the, where the first one ended, I was disappointed. Yes. I was excited to see if they were going to do something fresh with it or what was it going to mean if they did a time jump to where the characters were old. You know, there were, there were so many possibilities. But like I said, even though they said that, they still, because the trailers haven't shown too much, um, I can't say that I'm like I, I already hate it because they said that it starts no, right after course. the first one so like i said with this movie there's still there's just still so much that they haven't told us or showed us that um i can't decide like i'm not going to say yet that i love it i know i'm waiting for it but i don't know yet whether it's going to be great or if it's going to be sad and disappointing who do you think is going to be the villain because definitely uh, syndrome is not coming back or is he dun, 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 dun. oh no, good know. question i don't know we'll see you know i um, do know a little thing mm-hmm. but um but I'm not going to say because okay, I don't want to yeah, spoil people. Wanna, yeah, but that, that's all, all I'm not going to uh, link <laughs> or say anything because, yeah. I did hear several theories, though. I, I like There's so many different theories. There's theories that Dash could be the villain. There's theories that oh, Violet that'd could be, be interesting. the villain. <laughs> there's theories that, um, that Jack-Jack is going to become a villain. Like, I don't know. There's, there's plenty of theories. Um, actually, something just popped into my head. What if... So they apparently... All they said, right, was just that the, the movie will start right where they left off Mm -hmm. right but what they i don't know at least someone can correct me maybe in the comment section if i'm wrong but uh i don't believe they ever clarified that like they're not going to do one of those things where yeah the first five minutes start right after where the first one ended but then there's like a transition and then they go to like like 10 years later or something you think i highly doubt that to maybe be they won't do it but who knows they you know maybe pixar's playing that game where they're like i mean hmm. yeah technically the movie will start right where it left off but maybe there might be a plot j- or a time jump later. i don't know i feel like they wouldn't be so secretive about that i feel like it, it would be more because it's a big news you yeah. know what you what you're saying here it would be a, a game changer if you want to say it but i hope we see frozone back because yeah. he was very yeah, likable that epic line mm-hmm. uh where are my uh what is it i know it in spanish <laughs> Goes, uh, he goes, uh, where is my super suit? And there you his go. wife is like, he's like, I need to save the greater good. And his, his wife is like, greater good? I'm... I am your wife. <laughs> I am the greatest good you are ever going to get. And then give him, uh, like, give, give me my super suit, woman. Give Kian the Oscar. <laughs> 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 that was great. That was great. Um, I think that's all for yeah. The Incredibles. So we're going to jump. Let's do, uh, what's it? Hotel, okay, now we're going to talk about Hotel Transylvania 3. I know, oh, you've been waiting for this one. I know it's your favorite film ever. Mm-mm, no, 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 no. <laughs> let me clarify. I, I like the first Hotel Transylvania, and the second one was all right. Um, I'm in no way, like, anticipating for this movie. <laughs> but the reason the reason I think we have it on here is just kind of because, like, it's so it's going to be Sony's recent f- – or actually, no, no, they had the star come out. Never mind. But it, it's going to be – Sony has not been having hits lately, um, at least not critically. Financially, the Emoji Movie was fine, but um, critically, that was a disaster. The star, no one really paid attention to it. Um, so Hotel Transylvania 3 is going to be the first movie that comes out that no one's immediately hating it and that it has a shot at still having people go watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why it's on here. What are your thoughts? You know, they're making this third one, and, and it seems like they've branded Hotel Transylvania as their, like, hit series that now they keep making sequels to. Yeah, definitely. I totally agree with what you're saying. You know, because you look at the other films, you know, Cloudy with the Chance of Meetable had a sequel, but it hasn't had a third one. 
thank god <laughs> um but yeah like again sony doesn't have a like you know a, a toy story you know uh, i hope that's run mania they did sort of okay people sort of liked it so they're like we're gonna go with it <laughs> we're making some okay money so why not um like you i did enjoy the first hotel the second one i personally really liked it but with the third one um i look at the trailer you know i'm and they go on a vacation on a cruise and i you know, I, I'm curious to see if they're going to bring new monsters. I think that's going to be uh, something to look forward to. But it looks a bit cheesy because and, and weird because, you know, the whole title of this franchise is Hotel Transylvania. And the third movie is not even going to take place in the hotel. I think in what we liked about the first movie, you know, I'm talking for myself, but uh, it was how does... Imagine a hotel that is full of monsters like how cool is that and you know the generous zombie you know had, there was a lot of creativity and imagination which i really like you know the, the what if you know um but in this one it's like okay a cruise full of monsters okay it just doesn't sound as interesting as the hotel for me and yeah but I, at the same time i don't think it's gonna be as awful as you know the star or anything like that i did see some humor in it i think um the characters are still likable and i i, I want to see more of their story i hope we get to see more of um mavis and and her husband what's his name um, um jimmy <laughs> the redhead uh, guy um <laughs> And their kid, kind of, their family story. Because, you know, in the first one, they fall in love. Second one is like, you know, they have a kid. And then the third one is like, we'll see. <laughs> uh, so I think it, it's going to be interesting. You know, I hope we get to see more of them. And did you know, you know that short film they did? The one with the, the dog? Puppy. The yeah. puppy. Oh. He shows up in the film. Oh, really? Yeah, he's in the trailer. Oh. So that'll be interesting. So that's interesting, yeah. And but I don't have much to say about this film. I don't think it's gonna be so terrible. But I'm not like pumped about We're it. We're anticipating it just to see whether it's a disaster or if like they can redeem themselves. I don't expect so much we'll of see. it. So we're gonna jump to the next film, which is. Wreck-It right, Ralph yes. 2, yes, okay. Disney Returns, folks. Yes, oh my gosh. So Wreck-It Ralph 2, something in the interwebs. Um. Wreck-It Ralph, so Ralph breaks the internet. There you Wreck-It Ralph 2. Um, quick fun fact. Uh, this is actually, I, I like, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but if I believe I did my research correctly, this is the first Disney movie to get a theatrical sequel release and have the sequel be treated with the same amount of effort that went into the original because I mean mm -hmm. yeah all the Disney movies have a bunch of sequels and we yeah, all know how we, we all know how we feel about the straight to DVD sequels <laughs> but uh this is I believe the first one where Disney has actually taken one of their original movies that was a hit um, and is actually putting the same amount of effort into making a theatrical release for its sequel um, and so because of that I'm one of the reasons I believe we're highly anticipating this movie is because this movie will set the pace as to whether Disney can make sequels or not because Pixar um, has already established that they can make sequels. You know, I mean, not all of them are great, but, <laughs> exactly. but they have made Toy Story 2, Toy Story 3. They have made Cars 3. They have made uh, Finding Door. You know, they've proved that they can make great sequels. Um, but Disney has not done that yet. Up until this point, they've been pumping out original after original after original. And so this will mark whether, you know, they're capable of even Because everyone's already kind of going into Frozen 2 hating it. <laughs> but this one, people are going into it with a much more open mind. Mm -hmm. And so people from this will get to know whether Disney's actually capable of making good sequels. Yeah, like you said, it's, like you said, it's very interesting because, you know... You, they're coming out. It's sad because they were doing all these originals, like you know, Big Hero Six and Tango, Frozen and Zootopia, uh, Zootopia Moana. oh Moana, all great films. And I was like, they're in a roll. <laughs> so you know, it's a bit disappointing for me to see that they're going now um, on a sequels route, and it's not just one. They're doing for all of them, Frozen. For for, um, so far, the only two that have been confirmed are, are Wreck It Ralph and Frozen. I feel like they were doing one more. I might be wrong. Um, <laughs> And they were going to also do um, Gigantic, they canceled but they canceled that. it, unfortunately. That so was I was like, sad. oh, I wanted an original. Because, you know, I, I really like originals. Mm -hmm. But what I'm surprised about this is that Wreck-It Ralph, you know, was a really good film. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't like a huge success, I'm going to say. Like, it wasn't like as big as Frozen. Mm -hmm. So I'm quite surprised 
for it to come back with a sequel because it wasn't like you know an anticipated thing many fans mm-hmm. were asking for but even though it's not an, like an ask thing from from fans it's uh, kind of like a you know nice gift from this it's like you know guys i know you didn't ask for it but it's gonna be nice you're gonna enjoy it because you like the first one which means the potential of it being really good because it wasn't yeah. a, a sequel that like they know they had to make it, exactly they're, they're, the potential of them it's not like it you good. know the nut job they did a sequel that no one wanted because mm-hmm. the first one sucked this one was a really first solid film so i think to make a second one makes sense like despicable me and i'm very interested to see this one because i mean I love, you know, the, the first one, how creative it was to go into different video games. Everything about that film was super, super original and, and, and very relatable to video gamers and things like that. But this one is like internet stuff. So I'm thinking, are people going to have a problem like the Emoji movie? Because I feel like this film is probably going to go to some you know, um, websites that people know, clearly. Oh, they already, I can see in the little image that they, like have, some, they have some version of Google. It doesn't say Google, but mm-hmm. it has like... A Google. Google. Okay, maybe it might just be because this is in a different. This might be a different link or like a different. No, no, they do that on purpose. I saw the the trailer and they kind of like make. So then it's it's Google or something, and then they have like Lubhub. I don't know what that is. (laughs) They have like, <gasps> Juffy, some, I don't know. They have some other, like... Yeah, area. so, for example, I do know that they go to Oh My Disney. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, um... And that, that's one of the most anticipated yeah. scenes that I'm waiting well, for. Okay, so in D23, which is a Disney convention that it, uh, it happens every two years, they leaked a uh, couple of scenes from Record Ralph 2, and one of them was a huge success with the audience. Uh, should I mention or not yeah, really? Yeah, you can. So, um, if you don't want to find out, I'll just skip a little bit. But it's um, this scene with all the Disney princesses, all of them, all of them. So, and they had the actual voices of all of them from, doing... Starting from Ariel. From Ariel, from Ariel on now, all the right. act, all the people that voiced those princesses will become... So, yeah, almost all of them. But, because, yeah, because they're alive and everything yeah. like that. Um, but, yeah, so super exciting. Apparently, it got a great response from people. It's very funny and cute and something kind of historical and awesome to have the this actual is the, voices. This is the first time that, like, something like that is happening. Yeah. Like, that's and, cool. and some people are like, okay, I don't know if that's meta or, like, weird to, like, reference themselves. But I like it. I think it's nice. I mean, it's not too Lego-ish. Yeah. Um, it's kind of subtle. We'll see how that turns yeah, out. Yeah, I'm very, very excited for that scene. But, yeah, my question is, do you think it, it's going to, like... Because, you know, I did like the Emoji movie and not loved it. It was all, all right. But many people had a problem because they went to Instagram and, and stuff like that. And I bet this film will go to websites. Do you think people are not going to have a problem because it's Disney? We, or are they, they going to have a problem? We will see. I yeah. think it just it depends on how they do it. Because, um, I mean, the first one had them going to video games and stuff. But arguably, you can say like, like when they like the whole the whole world that uh, Penelope is in mm-hmm. is basically a version of like Mario Kart. Right. But the difference is like if this was the Emoji Movie, they would have been lazy and just said the world is Mario Kart mm-hmm. and we're just gonna take a Mario Kart character. Mm-hmm. But Disney actually, I mean, I don't know if like they got it from somewhere. But they made it different. They have, like, when I think of Sugar Crush or whatever the name of that game was and Penelope, I think of that's Sugar Wreck-It Rush. Ralph. Like, that's Wreck-It Ralph's character in game. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, the other, the character that, and, like, the, the game Wreck-It Ralph comes from. I don't know if that was, someone can maybe tell me if that was an actual game or not. But that, to me, feels very Disney original, you know, like, the, like the, they didn't just take from a recognizable brand. So in this one, it they could very easily take it down. On the route of just hopping from well-known site to site but knowing disney i hope and feel that they will um they're gonna put their own twist on a lot of stuff i personally don't mind it like i understand why would you not like it but i personally like that the fact they went to instagram spotify and stuff like that i think it's like something that i see every day and it's relatable so it's like you know mm-hmm. so i wouldn't mind if they go to the emoji direction in this film but you know, if it's also creative, even better, you mm-hmm. know? So I, I'm, I'm cool with it. But do you have anything else you want to add to um, Wreck-It Ralph? No, I think that's pretty much it. That it's We're excited. This is going to be Disney's... I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited. You know, the characters were super likable in the film. Uh, we'll see what the villain is going to be like. Um, yeah. That, mm-hmm. That's going to be interesting. But yeah, let's jump to the All next right, film. So this one is the one that I had no idea I was excited for until they released the trailer this year. 
Uh, and so the last one we're going to talk about today is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It's the first animated Spider-Man movie to be taken on by a big company. Um, and I, I mean, I think it's the first animated Spider-Man to get like its own theatrical release. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, so basically this movie, they just released a trailer earlier this month. And um, uh, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the trailer, I don't I mean, I don't think it's something that will take away from the movie. But basically, so in the trailer, first off, the animation in the trailer looks Amazing. so good. Amazing. Like it's it's like this mixture of like drawn and like it jumps out of the screen kind of like you can't see Kian right now but he's doing a lot of hand <laughs> gestures and he's very into it <laughs> um, so basically the big the big twist of it is that you get to the end and um and you find out that it is the um the black spider-man i think his name is miles, miles morales. morales yeah i'm not a big comic book person so this was actually one of the first times that i was like wait i was like oh i was like yo okay this is so cool i was like what is this i, I wanted to know more um and so, the, so that's a twist, and it's just it looks really cool. It's gonna take on this story that I mean, at least if I don't follow comic books, this is the first time I'm ever gonna see it. Um, and yeah, go anything else? Yeah. yeah. Um, so you know, you you brought up Miles Morales, which is I wanna tell you this. I don't I don't know if it's a spoiler or not, but in the comic books, you know, I, I haven't read it, but I, yeah. I know this. He shows up because because P- the original, Peter yeah, dies. I, I was, yeah, I was so that. many people are like, is Peter gonna be dead in this one? Yes, no. Weird. But many people have seen in the trailers like a second Spider-Man or like a shadow, mm-hmm. so they think that Peter might be alive. But that's what. So yeah, my theory is because I've talked about this with other people too. Is so like yeah, they show the gra- in the trailer. They show the grave of Rip Peter Parker. Oh really? Or I don't know if it says directly Peter Parker, but it, the initials are like it okay. says. You can assume that it's Peter Parker. But then at the very end, like you were saying, he's talking to some guy that's also in a kind of suit, mm-hmm. and they don't show his face. But he's like, oh, so there's more of us and mm-hmm. something. And who knows? That might be Peter Parker. That might be another we'll Spider Man. Uh, I just think the cinematography is mm-hmm. brilliant and so unique, and I think it's gonna be quite epic to be honest. Even. I as a non, you know, of Spider-Man fan, I mean, I did like mm-hmm. the the Homecoming one uh-huh. now, but I, I don't consider myself a Spider-Man yeah. fan. I'm still very excited and I'm very curious to see it, and it has gotten a very good response from a lot of people. So, good job, Sony. And you right? know what? The, that's the that is the real shocker here. The real <laughs> shocker <laughs> here true. is that the company attached to this movie is the same company that produced the Emoji movie and uh, the Star and and Smurf, but mostly the Emoji movie. <laughs> so you know for them to go I when I first saw this trailer I was like you sure this is Sony this comes out of Sony um, it's really exciting that is what makes this so exciting is that I want to see Sony redeem themselves because yeah then yeah they, they can't they did the emoji movie and now everyone <laughs> has officially branded them the worst animation mm-hmm. studio ever so this is their shot if they if they mess this up then they're done uh, no one's and ever gonna you give know, them a shot again it's not their fault they just haven't found their thing so yeah. maybe this might be the thing they've been looking for so many years and trying new things stick to making comic book slash animated movies and yeah maybe. and <laughs> we've seen that it's a hard thing to bring comic books to the big screen, you know? It, for many years, uh, they have failed, apparently. And with Wonder Woman now, uh, so live action was, you know, great deal. But we haven't seen much of um, animated in the big, mm-hmm. big screen. So we'll see how, how they take this comic book. To date, I think The Incredibles is actually the only, or it's one of the best superhero, an- I mean, it's the best animated superhero movie mm-hmm. Um, and I think the only ones, the only other one in recent years that I can think of that was a superhero animated movie was, I guess, Big Hero 6. Ah, um, but true, true. Yeah, so this this movie, interesting. The animation looks amazing. The plot looks like it's going to be intense. Um, and it is definitely on our to watch list. And so really quick, I don't know if, I don't remember if we mentioned it. I don't think we did. But just for if you're wondering, um, so Hotel Transylvania is scheduled to come out on July 13th. So that's going to be a summer release. Um, and right before it, in June, on June fifteenth, uh, Pixar is going to release Incredibles two, um, and then later in the year, and so then in the very late end of the year, Disney's going to release Wreck It Ralph two on November twenty first, right in time for Thanksgiving, and then uh, finally Sony's going to end the year off with releasing Spider Man in December on December fourteenth is right now. When is Incredibles coming? I'm sorry. Uh, in June fifteenth. June fifteenth. What, what do you think is the best time for like an anime? Film oh, that's the per- that Pixar. They pick they, their current release times are either the movie gets released in June yeah. 
yeah. or it gets released in November. Yeah. Um, and so far, their summer slot, the one in June, is the one that produced. That's the one that got Inside Out. Finding mm-hmm. Dory was in that slot. Uh, many years ago, when when the original one came out, I'm pretty sure that they came out in May or June. Um, so that's definitely yeah, they're th- gonna kill the box office. I think it's funny because they have it like almost reserved. Like this is Disney. Uh, uh, don't even get close. And that's why Wreck It Ralph <laughs> Disney slot is the November slot because yeah. Frozen, Moana, Moana, Big Hero mm-hmm. Six, they all came out in the November time period. And so Wreck It Ralph is gonna follow that and also come out in the November time period. Um, the last thing I kind of wanted to say prediction-wise is just their kind of, what do you think their box office success is going to be? Like, the number one, I think, oh, might be The Incredibles. It's just nostalgia. Yeah. This, it, Hollywood right now is all about nostalgia. Like, in Jurassic Park, everything TV-wise, from Fuller House to everything movie now, Finding Dory, it's this is like the time the past like years it's all about bringing back you know all the live action disney's doing beauty and the beast and all that stuff it's all the nostalgia factor so finding dory did amazing so i'm expecting the one that's gonna bring the most money is definitely the incredibles too and then wreck it ralph i definitely i agree i think those two are going to be the highest grossing and my prediction i hope i really think incredibles 2 has the potential to shatter toy story 3's box office like right now wow, really? i believe toy story 3 is the uh I think Toy Story 3 is the highest grossing animated film ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think Incredibles 2, okay, may, maybe it won't surpass it, but I think Incredibles 2 is going to shatter the record because Finding Dory broke Toy Story 3's box office opening weekend record, right? right? Yeah, I think this is going to shatter Finding Dory. I think it's going to raise the, the record up. Um, I really think that Incredibles 2, with all the hype it has, if Finding Dory that had people so mixed still mm-hmm. was able to break those box That's office true. records, then this movie that doesn't really have people that mix is going to break records. Like I, can't I mean, wait. but uh, we have to also see how good the film is. That's the thing is that if all they is all that we would take to mess them up is if they release a trailer and the trailer gives off the vibe of it not being as good. I mean, still a lot of people then, would go see it. Th- yeah, I would still go see it, but, but not as much. Um, um, and yeah, and I mean, I was gonna say, who do you think is gonna win the Oscar? But we know so well, little of each. At the time, yeah. Well, that's something we'll have to predict yeah. now. Next year's podcast, when we do the the ones for 2019, we can make that prediction. Yeah. So um, actually, then right now we can of course make our prediction for, for the 2017 year. Oscars. That's, that's true. We know we we pretty much. I mean, at least we assume and we hope that Coco is gonna get the the 2017. Yeah, Oscar. definitely. I mean, you got the Golden Gloves. I mean, the Golden Gloves. Right? Like, <laughs> come yeah. on, like what competition does Coco have this year? Yeah, <laughs> honestly. Um, and I'm just going to do a quick shout out to the Grinch movie. Illumination Studios is doing Grinch. You know, this they they like Dr. Seuss. How do you pronounce it? Yeah, they've made like a bunch of Dr. Seuss. There you uh, go, Seuss. Uh, they've done the, done the Lorax. And I actually quite enjoy the Lorax. I mean, it's not a, the best film, but I, I think it's very cute. And these books are very famous. Uh, even in Universal Studios, they have a whole land um, based on it, like uh, Dr. Seuss. So I think The Grinch is going to be an, an interesting um, to see because it's a classic, you know. We all know the live action one. I feel like a lot of people watch it when it comes like Christmas time. It's a classic, you know. So I wonder how it's going to be actually in animated, you know. Is it going to be a copy from the live action? Are they going to bring something new to the story? But at the same time, since it's such a classic, I don't know how people will feel about the change, you know, if it's something new. But I would like something different. And from what I've seen in the look of it, I, I, I like the, the animation style. What do you think? We'll see how it comes out. I have I have no high expectations, but I also don't have any low expectations for it. Um, I'm just really curious as to how Illumination is going to handle it and how it's gonna, the movie is going to come out. Because Illumination was doing so well in 2016. Until. And then they released Despicable Me 3 and they've yeah. been back in my bad graces. So Illumination, I thought they were finding themselves, but apparently they have not. And we will see what 2018 brings for them. It's just I have a love-hate relationship with the Illumination <laughs> Studios. I mean, I absolutely love the first two Despicable movies, but then I absolutely do not like uh, Life of Pets mm-hmm. and Despicable Me 3, Minions, uh, and the fact that they're doing a sequel to that. So, yeah, I mean, they did find, you know, they're getting a lot of money out of um, Minions and stuff like that. I don't think they're going to get that much money out of this one, though, because the Lorax didn't do that much money so I, I think this is gonna be you know straight to netflix netflix s- kind of movie Hope, we'll see I, i'll definitely go check oh it me out too definitely it uh it comes out on november 9th is when it's Ooh, close to my birthday so, so that that'll be exciting 
Um, and then, yeah, that pretty much anything else? No, I think, yeah, that there's some, we ha don't even have a trailer for the Grinch, so we <laughs> yeah, can't so even we, mention not much, about that. Not, yeah, same thing with Wreck-It Ralph and, and with Wreck-It Ralph is that we don't, we, those movies well, haven't had Well, at least we heard much. of some things from D23. Yeah, we knew that. more about Wreck-It Ralph than the Grinch one, but, uh, they still haven't released trailers for these movies. Um, but let us know, which one are you most yeah. excited to see and which one do you think it's, you're not excited at all to see and maybe which one do you think it's gonna be a surprise i think maybe the grinch might be a surprise we will see we'll, we'll see, how we'll see. Goes. um yeah thank you so much for listening to our very first coog tv uh coog cinema podcast thank you so much um be sure to if you like what you're listening to uh leave subscribe to us on youtube we'll be uploading more podcasts throughout the year soul and i will definitely be back for more animation talk throughout the year um stay tuned for our reviews that are going to come out soon if you haven't already check out our we just did a video on the best and worst animated movies of 2017 so check that out and we also mentioned sort of the films we yeah, just talked now a uh, little bit so it's Kind of nice to mm -hmm. see both videos if you want to see um, that. And then, yeah, that's pretty much Hit the little notification bell so that yeah, you can get important. notified every time we upload a video. Um, and do, 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 I think that's everything. That's then. it. You follow us on Facebook <laughs> and all yep. that stuff. You know the drill. And I'm Sol Carlos. I'm Kian Bakube. And thank you so much for listening.